Okay, so another Ayurveda with rocks. This video is about your relationship with food. Now, this can be a pretty big subject and actually a pretty heavy subject, a pretty complex subject, right? So changing our relationship with food, changing the way that we eat can be like changing a religion. It, it's something that might be very deeply ingrained in us and really it can be ingrained in us in, in many different ways through media, through experience, through your relationship with yourself, right? So it's a pretty big subject to explore. So I invite you to start to explore it slowly to take your time. But first and foremost, notice what is your relationship with yourself, okay? So how are you talking to yourself on a daily basis, right? Are you one to sort of speak to yourself in a way of violence and not in a way of self-love, meaning beating yourself up for certain things, right? Talking to yourself in kind of a negative way. So, you know, it was a saying from my, what I remember from when I was young was that to talk to others, to treat others the way that you want to be treated, right? And so we tend to do that. We treat others kindly, but then we forget to treat ourselves the same way. We want others to treat us that way, but then we forget to treat ourselves that same way, right? So it's a big part of our relationship with food as well. Now I invite you as well to explore what have been some of your food patterns, okay? Now, do you kind of consume food in a way to heal yourself? You know, if you're kind of doing it nicely, let's say, and in a way to make yourself feel good, or are you doing it in a way to heal yourself, but sort of in a malice way? Let's say, you know, we're going through some grief, or really, it's been a tough relationship, we've had a stressful day at work, so I'm gonna eat a bag of chips because it makes me feel good or I'm gonna eat a pizza because it makes me feel good, right? Are you using those types of foods to take away some type of emotional imbalance that you might be feeling at the moment, right? Now, there's absolutely no judgment with any of this because we've all been there. We've all done many things as far as food goes. So just, it's only something to take a look at. That's all it is, to just notice what have my patterns been, right? Now, another thing that is very common, another part of the relationship, let's say, another layer of the onion, so to speak, might be, are you feeling guilty after eating certain foods and are you putting punishment on your body for eating those certain foods? We hear this all the time in the Western society, especially, you know, my first career, basically, um, personal training and things like that. Well, you're eating a muffin, so how long do I have to run to work off this muffin? So then it creates this kind of bad relationship with that type of food, thinking, well, I'm going to eat a muffin, but I need to go and run now for, for five kilometers, or I need to do this type of workout so that I can get rid of that, right? But food isn't something that we're supposed to get rid of. Food is something that we're supposed to use to nourish and to feed ourselves and then our body eliminates what it doesn't need, right? It eliminates what it doesn't need through our poop, through our urine, through our breath, um, through sweat, you know? So our body is meant to take the goodness from the food and use that, use the food as energy, use the food as your, it's building your sight, as building your sense of hearing, as building your hair, as building your nails, right? So when we have this mentality that I put this in my body, but now I need to get rid of it and I need to work out, it might not be the best relationship that's supporting your well-being, right? So those are some things that you can certainly explore, start to take a look at. One thing that I suggest is to take a, a do a food journal. So write down Monday, the times of day that you're eating, what types of foods are you eating, and just kind of take a look at that. Because sometimes our relationship with food can actually be quite blurred and maybe completely unaware, right? We might be eating in this sort of autopilot gaze or, or daze, let's say. You might be eating distracted all the time and then realizing, holy crap, I just ate, you know, that whole bag of popcorn while I was watching this movie or watching this show, right? 
So those are some things that you can take a look at. Do that food journal, notice what types of foods you're eating. And then as you look at that food journal, notice the thought process that's going through your head. Are you saying, oh God, I, I had a bagel, stupid me, as if I had that, this is all bad, this is bad. What am I doing? These are such bad foods, right? But in Ayurveda, in life, it, it's not really said that there's good foods or bad foods. There are foods that might be bad for you if you are unable to digest them. Maybe you're eating those foods in kind of a time of day that's not feeding to your energy or feeding to your digestion. Maybe you're eating those bad foods per se at 8 p.m. at night when our body is actually weaker and it's not the time to digest those foods, right? So maybe those foods might be better in the middle of the day for you, right? So there's kind of a lot to explore there. And just as I say that, you might be like, whoa, okay. So again, feel free to contact me, ask me, chat with me if you like. Uh, I'm taking clients as well. So I mean, if you wanna see me on an individual basis, then we can certainly set something up just to start to explore. Know that this journey isn't meant to be a flip one day fix done, right? Just like our life, it's meant to be an experience and to experience every moment and to notice and to be aware of every moment. So when you do that food journal, being aware of what you're eating, being aware of your thought process as you reflect on those foods. If you like to read, there's one other thing that I'm going to mention. Um, if you like to read and reading kind of sparks some of that reflection or some of that introspection, meaning it, it reflects a thought process in you, it reflects a feeling in you, then this is a really great book to grab. And so it's Explore Your Hunger. It's from by Joyful Belly and the authors here, John Immel and Natalie Hinn. And it's just really great. It's just about your relationship with food. It's about all of that. So it's just that, it's exploring your hunger, right? Remember that it can be a big shift. It can be a big change because it can be like changing a religion or changing a belief, right? And so some of us can get really stuck in those beliefs and have quite a hard time shifting while others of us can be grabbed by Oh, she said this, so I'm going to do this and this and this. And, and, and you might feel overwhelmed, like everything is all over the place, right? So it just, it might be a nice way to start just kind of checking out that book and taking a look at it and just starting to ask yourself those questions. Be that little annoying kid and ask yourself some of those questions. You know, what has my relationship with food been like and why? Why? Maybe it might come from, you know, the relationship your parents had with food, the relationship your parents kind of monkey see, monkey do, right? So just something to explore. Explore your relationship with food. And have an awesome day, as always. Bye, guys.